This video is sponsored by PCBWay. I'll be the first to admit, this is kind of a weird aimless project compared to what I typically do on this channel, but in the end it turned out to be pretty cool, so here we go. It all started when I decided it would be fun to design a solid aluminum waterproof enclosure for the LumiBoost LED driver from Stratus LEDs. My goal with this was to try and illuminate a body of water from the bottom to create some interesting long exposure photography effects, where the entire lake would kind of look like it's glowing. I designed this enclosure in Onshape. Before setting the files off to be manufactured, I 3D printed this mock-up to make sure all the parts would fit. All was well, so then I sent the files to PCBWay to be machined. Oh boy, oh, opening machined parts is the best. Look at that thing, holy cow. That is pretty, that is so pretty. This is the inductor heat sink that goes on top of the inductor on the Lumi Boost. So this thing will fit right here. And this is supposed to be the polycarbonate windshield that fits over the entire thing. Oh, this is sick. After that, it was time to start the assembly. First, I soldered some wires onto the 200 watt cobs I'm using. COB stands for Chip On Board Array. It's basically just a bunch of little LED diodes wired together to make one big emitter. Next, I soldered the COB onto the Lumi Boost. The Lumi Boost is basically just a high-tech DC to DC boost converter that lets you power the 60 volt LED off of 12 or 24 volts. And it also allows you to control dimming with an RC servo signal or DMX. Then I soldered on a thermistor for active temperature control. This allows the Lumi Boost to dim the LED as it starts to get too hot. Next, I soldered on the power input wires and put some sill pads on the thermally active components. Thermal grease was used in between the LED and the heatsink. I then placed all the electronics in the housing and routed the thermistor underneath the LED. In order to get the LumiBoost set up properly, I plugged it in via USB and connected it to the configuration software. This allows you to set up the max output current, low voltage cutoff, max temperature, and stuff like that. I then connected power to confirm it was all working and then screwed the LumiBoost into the housing. The large inductor on top of the Lumi Boost also gets quite hot, so I placed a sill pad on that and then clamped it in place with this aluminum block. I'm using 14 gauge speaker wire for the input since it's cheap and the wire will need to be quite long. That got soldered onto the Lumi Boost inputs and then heat shrinked. To form a seal, I made a little silicone dam on the outside, and then once that dried, I mixed up some epoxy and injected it into a little reservoir that I made on the inside. The wire itself is a pretty tight fit into this inner slot, and then the outer recessed area was what got filled with epoxy. After that, I installed this reflector. It also serves the purpose of securing the LED in place. The screws that hold it on go through the entire housing, so I was sure to silicone those before putting them in. I measured that the LED was drawing 8 amps if I touched the alligator clips directly onto its input connector, and 8.7 amps if the power goes through the wire. That means there's about 19 watts of losses in this wire. That's out of the 230 watts it's drawing in total. To seal the cover, I added silicone around the edge and screwed it on with a crap load of screws. Here's the first test. I put some food coloring in the water to visualize the convection currents from the hot aluminum. Pretty neat. Unfortunately, after several hours underwater, there was some condensation inside. My design had failed. To give the Lumi Boost a little extra protection, I conformal coated it. To strain relieve the power wires, I 3D printed this clamp thing here that bolts on the back, and then it was ready for a test, at a tiki party. I figured it would be nice to get some additional underwater ambiance lighting for maximal party vibes. I'm gonna plug this in and then chuck it. Woo! Oh wow, I can see weeds down there so already. Cool. Whoa! It just looks green, that's it. If I let the light sink too deep, it would just get covered in lake weeds and not look that cool. But if I pulled it up closer to the surface, it would illuminate all the weeds from above and looked awesome. <laughs> Definitely a good accessory for nighttime swimming. Makes it easier to check for sharks. It also creates some epic mood lighting for when Colin wants to star as the lake monster. <laughs> a real A plus performance. Oh, wow. Oh, it shines in the trees. That's so cool. The light, on the other hand, did not perform that well. It never turned off due to water ingress, but after the party, there was definitely a few drops in the enclosure. I'm pretty sure this is because I didn't take the rubber sheath off the wire at the area I potted an epoxy, so water was probably just squishing in around that. I later learned that for proper waterproofing, you really need to strip back the sheath and tin the wire strands for the section that gets potted. That way, no water can squeeze through. I later redesigned the enclosure to have a much longer epoxy trough, but I have not gotten around to testing out this newer version yet. If you want these files, they're available to the whole wide world in Onshape. Onshape is a cloud-native CAD platform that's free for hobbyists. If you want to access or modify any of the CAD files from this video, just click on the Onshape link in the description. 
You'll just need to sign up for a free Onshape account and then boom, you'll have access to everything, including all the source sketches, so you can make whatever modifications you want. I make all of my projects public on Onshape, so it's basically like you have the password to my cat account. Pretty awesome. So just throwing the light into the lake didn't quite seem to give the effect that I was looking for, which was to make the whole body of water just subtly glow from the depths. So, I decided that it might be a good move to mount the light on an RC boat that could drive around during the long exposure photograph. Today we're building <laughs> Today we're building a boat. Okay, now we're looking for sticks. We got a lot of sticks, but not the right sticks. Here's sticks. This is the right sticks. It's too too big of a stick. Here we go. I think this is the sticks we need. Perfect sticks right here. Should we make a sailboat? Put a sail on this sucker? Have it blow away. Right on. You can be the, the stick master. Yeah, I don't know. We might need to hit up the grocery store for Tupperware. My first autonomous boat that I ever built was just a Tupperware. So what's the, what's the problem with Tupperware boats? It pushes a ton of water. Ah, scientists. Okay, I guess we can't do that. We'll need to make some ultra hydrodynamic foam holes. We got these just pine sticks right now, but we could make this a luxury yacht if we upgrade to cedar from the scrap wood pile. This is styrofoam though. Nice, and I, I hate styrofoam because it just like breaks apart into a bunch of little chunks and it's just terrible to clean up. This is what we need, five bucks. It's kind of expensive, but oh, yeah, nice and hard. That's the stuff. You, the stick master likes his foam hard. Oh, that would make a good boat. <laughs> Maybe not. No. Ooh, that's like a shark tooth. Yeah. Dude, you could pan for gold. Oh boy. Yeah, this is the jackpot. That That'll do as long as it doesn't flip over because it doesn't seal, it just closes. This probably isn't watertight either. That's better. Oh yeah, let's do that one. In the sea of hardware, we found our candidates. Then we got to work building our boat. I was hundreds of miles away from my workshop, so the construction quality is a bit less than normal. But that's okay, because all this thing really needs to do is hold the light and a battery, and not sink. I decided to do a trimaran configuration because, well, actually I don't know why, but that's the way it ended up. So these are the little motors from my foamy chrono plan and I think we're gonna use them for this boat. They're kind of too small, but whatever, it's all we have. Oh, it's white. I haven't used a white silicone before. Just like car run a turkey. See if she fits. Oh yeah. It's, now it's hitting the wire. We'll have to carve out a path for the wire right here, but that's it. This is the light pod. So we've been working on this for about six hours now and we got all three holes glued together. We got our, uh, our bridge put on. <laughs> okay, we'll pick up again tomorrow. Getting ready for the maiden voyage. The water's starting to move, the tide's coming in. I guess it's going out, right? Before we test it out, a quick word about the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. Without PCBWay, I probably never even would have started this project. It was the fact that I could easily get the components CNC machined by PCBWay's online manufacturing services that made me do it in the first place. They also offer sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, injection molding, and vacuum casting. Another thing I had PCBWay make recently was this custom board. Not only did they fabricate the board, but they also did all the assembly and soldering. I can't tell you what it does yet, but I can tell you it sure is awesome, so be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out. Click on the link in the description to check out all the services PCBWay offers. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Here we go, let's see if it floats. Oh, it's totally nose heavy. Oh, it's super nose heavy. Oh, that sucks. It'll probably still drive though. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Oh yeah, baby, baby. Oh, no problem. This thing kicks ass. Look at that. Wow, oh. yeah, that's like a perfect speed. We're geniuses. This is the best boat ever. We're on a mission. We're on a mission. We're here at the Lido Island Bridge. We're gonna go do a test drive. Garrett's down there putting the boat in the water. And we got the time-lapse camera rolling up here. Scooting right yeah. along. <laughs> the guy thinks we're gonna catch a great white shark with it. You guys are fishing for great white shark. Hell yeah, we are, mate. He <laughs> thinks we're gonna come up short. I, I, I mean, have some confidence, man. No, I mean, I, a, a great white though, you know, I got <laughs> Yesterday, a guy caught two halibut here. Oh, well, I'd be happy with that. A little yeah. smaller than a great white, huh? Yeah, a little smaller. Tastes better though. So it turns out our boat is very difficult to drive in a straight line. <laughs> so we let the time-lapse camera run while we tried driving the boat back and forth. This was difficult because the boat has no inherent yaw stability and the breeze was really pushing it around. I composited together all the time-lapse photos in Photoshop and this is what we get. Kinda neat, but far from the original vision I was going for. We should put a hook on it. <laughs> 
The fish will, the fish will bite it and then just pull it away, and that's the last we'll ever see of this boat. <laughs> There's totally a ton of little fish under there. Yeah. Wow. After that, we took the light off the boat and went back to the canal to see if we could find some sand sharks. Oh, oh so right. Oh, wow, I can already see fish. Oh, that's cool. Look how many little <laughs> there are. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, Oh. So unfortunately we didn't find any sand sharks, but we did get plenty of minnows. They seem to be attracted to the light. We did, however, discover that the air has lots of stuff in it. Pretty amazing. These must all just be like sea particles from the ocean. It's a parachutist with sparklers. That's pretty cool. Mounting the light directly on the boat did not seem to work. So what's next? Well, I decided that instead of abiding by the sunk cost fallacy and moving on to a project that's actually worth my time, I climbed down deeper into the burning dumpster that is this project. And what does that involve? Well, we got some screws, some 3D printed parts, a spindle with a slip ring, and boom, just like that, we have a winch that can pull the light up and down with the flip of a switch. It goes down just fine, but it struggles going up. The only problem was that it didn't work. Not enough torque. So I climbed down further into the dumpster with some 3D printed gears, another servo, a bigger gear with a bearing, and a shaft, and some more screws. Voila, just like that, we now have a winch that actually works. But the real question is, will it make the pictures of the water any better? Uh, it hurts. <laughs> it looks so back heavy. It seems like it's about to flip over. That's real sketchy. Maybe we need the battery just sitting up here. It might fall off, but if it does, it'll probably just hang there. Okay, lowering the light. Oh, that's sick. You can see all the weeds. Wow. Um, now it's nose heavy because you lost the weight in the back. Yeah. That could be, oh, and it seems like that battery might fall off. <laughs> yeah, let's back. bring that one back. <laughs> Look at the weeds. That's so cool. From a top-down view, it actually looks pretty cool with the light shining through all the weeds. But the problem is, the area around the light is super blown out, so we need to take only the properly exposed parts of each image and composite them together. I did this manually in Photoshop, and here's what you get. It's not terrible, but definitely not what I was originally going for. The light sources are way too uneven to be what I want, and the boat would need to drive over the entire bay to make it work. But I mean, it's like, sorta cool. I sent the Feefish underwater drone to see what the light looked like from below and it was not very interesting at all. Whoa, there's already stuff I'm seeing. Whoa, there's wood. Look at that. But hey, you know what? Maybe putting the light on the submarine would be much better than putting it on a boat. Yeah, let's give that a try. Since the light itself is negatively buoyant, I had to add some foam to make it neutrally buoyant. I wanted to go much deeper with the sub than the boat winch could go, so I extended the wire by about 40 feet. Due to all the added resistance from the longer wire, the voltage was sagging too much for the light to handle. To fix that, I'm using this big boost converter on the shore that boosts the 24 volts from the 6S LiPo batteries up to 31 volts to send through the wire. The Lumi boost is only rated for 32 volts on the input, so I couldn't go any higher than that. Making a waterproof battery that mounts to the submarine would have been a much better solution, but also a lot more work. It's definitely still buoyant. I'll try and go down. There it goes. No problem. So you take the controller. Remember how to drive? No. No? Is this going up or down? This is going... This is up and down. Oh, shoot. This is forward and backwards. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, I'm gonna go start the, uh, start the GoPro night lapse. You see the bottom yet, Sebastian? Yeah, yeah, at 24 feet. Do you see any line bikes? No, but I there's rocks and stuff. Wait, wait, I found I found something cool. Do you want to figure out what this is here? Yeah, what is it? I could that be like some like a like pliers? That's a pair of pliers. It's a yeah. Pair of pliers. Yeah. Sick. Okay, uh, that's all the light tether we have. So I'm gonna plug in the boost converter now. Here it goes. Woo! Cool. Wow, we that looks pretty neat actually. So my hope is that that illuminates the bottom of the bridge well enough. Okay, well so, I'm at 27 feet, so if I go up, I'm sure it'll, we'll get more light. So out. I would maybe try and aim for like 25 feet. Oh, all right, yeah. And just drive ahead. back and forth. Yeah, it's glowing on the bottom. I think this is gonna look really cool. Oh yeah, you're right. That camera's pretty good at low light, huh? Mm -hmm. It's like night vision. That looks cool. Yeah, this is gonna look sick. Oh, you can see the sublights. It's gonna look radioactive. Oh, I see the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the lights on the sub. Whoa, okay, so this is 
This is with all, oh, there's, see that? See, that's what I'm saying. We're gonna get caught in this thing. That's the light tether right there. But that's only with the light from the, uh, from the upwards facing light. That's kind of trippy. Well, there's like not a lot of stuff down there. It's just all gravel. Oh wait, is that something? Yeah, look at that. There's a pipe or a tree. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, I just saw a fish. So after driving around for quite a while, we collected plenty of long exposure still frames to try and composite all together. I then loaded up the images in Photoshop as layers, and then did the same thing as before, where I deleted the overexposed bits of each image and composited them all together. This one that was shot on the GoPro turned out pretty uneven, so I ended up kind of cheating and adding a radial gradient to smooth out the light. And this is what we end up with. Ooh wee. This one was shot on the A7S II. I ended up just keeping the uneven lighting because it looks kind of cool. Still not what I was originally envisioning for the project, but I was happy enough with the result. I think to really get the whole body of water to glow, you would need a much brighter light at a much deeper depth to get it to diffuse as much as possible. You'd also need to be able to drive the light around the entire area and not just a section. Maybe I'll try that some other time. So that's pretty much it for this video. Check this out, Daniel. It's a fish right there. What do you see? Is that a fish? It's a fish. <laughs> Sebastian made a friend. Wow, uh, Sebastian made a friend. <laughs> Aww. Oh, did he leave? Oh, he left. Is that like a Christmas tree? I'm <laughs> serious, did somebody throw a Christmas tree in there? Hold up, hold up, I found, look at that object right there. Is that a, it, I, it kind of looked like a knife a second ago. I know, I want to find a murder weapon. It might be. Does this make you want your own submarine? Yes. <laughs> you can look for frogs. Yeah, will you get me one for Christmas? Get you a frog or a submarine? <laughs> a frog. Oh. And a submarine. Oh, look at the green glow on our faces. It's like, oh, yeah. uh, it's like radioactive. <laughs> it's, it's so cool, that's like the color of the water.